In this video, we'll talk about the principles of two photon microscopy. So we would learn the working principle, application and the components of a two photon microscope. Two photon microscope is one variant of fluorescence microscopy. That means fluorescence light would be used for imaging. Now let us appreciate what are the variations from fluorescence microscope. You might have already know the working principle of a fluorescence microscope. If you missed it, you can watch the video on fluorescence microscope at any point of time by clicking on the I button. Now here is an overview. Here is our excitation light. And through a filter cube, the desired wavelength is illuminating our fluorescence specimen. And the emitted fluorescent light is returning back through the objective and reaching the detector. At this point of time, the excitation light allows the electron to jump into excited state and later on it relaxes and thereby gives us a fluorescence emission. Fluorescence emission as depicted by this green line is detected by any kind of detector like camera, photomultiplier tube, etc. Now two photon microscopy is pretty much similar with some modifications. But before understanding two photon microscopy, we should analyze the name two photon. Actually, two photon is a kind of like a process. So here is a one photon process, which is normally the, understood by the Zablonsky diagram. So here you have excitation light, which allows the electron to jump from ground state to excitation state. There would be vibrational relaxation, which would ultimately lead to a radiative emission, which we see as a fluorescence. This process is otherwise known as one photon process or one photon fluorescence emission. But there is something called two photon or multi photon process. Here, instead of exciting with one particular photon, here you excite with two photons with with an energy which is much less. So the sum of energy is enough to excite an electron to jump into the excitation state. And thereby there would be a similar kind of vibrational relaxation and emission of fluorescence. One thing to note is the time difference between these two pulses are less than 50 femtoseconds. That means they are almost coinciding with each other. And this coincidence is really important for the fluorescence phenomena. And this is overview of two photon process. In fluorescence microscopy, one photon fluorescence is used. Also in the confocal microscopy, we use the phenomena of one photon fluorescence. Whereas in two photon microscopy, we use the two photon fluorescence or multi photon fluorescence system. Now already you get a point that how things work. So let's say we have to excite this GFP molecule. We can either excite with a one photon process with a light of wavelength 488 nanometer and we can do the same with a two photon process using a light of 920 nanometers in wavelength. So we have to give two pulses of 920 nanometer wavelength which are less than 50 femtosecond apart in order to illuminate them. But what is the advantage? We can understand the advantage by a simple formula. So the one photon fluorescence which is illuminating with 488 nanometer would have very high energy compared to the two photon process which has a lower energy. Why is so? Because E or the energy is equal to HC by lambda. That means simply energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. Higher the wavelength, lower would be the energy. And it makes a lot of sense because it reduces the chances of photo bleaching. If we use a higher wavelength, a infrared wavelength in this case, the chances of photo bleaching would be low but we achieve the same phenomena of fluorescence we illuminate the specimen it would fluoresce but the chances of photo bleaching get reduced okay another factor is scattering so let's say this is a tissue space this block represents a tissue and in this tissue there are many fluorophores at different different levels and different different depth when we illuminate the fluorophores at the surface there are not much scattering but imagine some fluorophore to be present in the deep inside the tissue, then it would lead to a lot of scattering. Now, there is an issue with the wavelength as well. Scattering is also inversely proportional to lambda to the power 4. That means greater the wavelength, lesser would be the scattering. And that's why in a two-photon process, if we use a 920 nanometer wavelength, we would have lesser scattering 
compared to if we use a 488 nanometer wavelength. So these are the two important factors that gives two photon an added advantage from other one photon processes. Now let us talk, talk about the comparison between these all microscopic uh, kind of uh, principles. So let's say in a cuvette you have fluorescent dye. If we illuminate the cuvette with an objective and do it by wide field fluorescence microscope, you would see a wide uh, illumination beam like this. If we do it for a confocal microscope, the beam would be much narrower because the laser is coherent and the laser waste is narrow. But still there would be some amount of out of focus illumination as you can see here. But if we do with a two photon microscope, only the point in the focus would be illuminated. Any other point in any other non-focal plane would not be illuminated. That means we can get resolution at very high level. And that confocality is not achieved here by pinhole. In confocal microscope, though there is some amount of out-of-focus light, it is cancelled out by the pinhole. At any point of time, if you need to learn about confocal, you can click on the I button. But in two photon microscope, we don't have a pinhole. We don't need to use a pinhole because only the points which are at focus would be illuminated. Let me explain it in a bit more details. So here you illuminate the specimens. Only these fluorescently labeled proteins are at focal plane. So fluorescence would be observed from them only. Any other proteins which are not in the plane, they would not illuminate anything because there they might experience these two pulse of lasers in a time gap which is more than 50 femtosecond. That means they are not really coinciding with each other. Only the spots which are in focus, there the laser pulses would almost coincide and give rise to this two photon process. Let's talk about the microscope components and the light path in bit more details. So this is how a typical fluorescent uh, two, uh, two photon microscope would look like. Lot of components together, but we should kind of like disengage from this kind of view and tell us that two photon microscope could be highly customizable. It can look very different. But anyway, here is a microscope body. There would be a laser unit, which is ultimately giving rise to the laser. There would be some stage controller, some fluorescence lamp just for locating the specimen. There would be a computer system. There would be other processing units which kind of converts the analog to digital information and send it to the uh, computer. So all of these things are there. Anyway, the laser is kind of tuned to emit something 720 nanometer to something 1500 nanometers of wavelength and the powers are provided in this particular graph. In simple word, this is known as laser tuning curve for a two photon laser. Anyway, you can see most of the cases this laser is giving you red and far red kind of illumination. Now in two photon microscope, we can customize a lot of things. So you can see this microscope looks very different from the previous one, which is kind of like a company or let's say a company build microscope. You can also customize this microscope on your own by adjusting the light paths. So let us try to understand the light path in a bit more details. So again, here in this diagram, we have our laser unit here. So this laser unit would actually give rise to a laser, which is generally invisible because it is infrared. But in this diagram, we are just pointing out as a red laser. Anyway, this laser would pass through a unit known as Pockel cell. This Pockel cell would actually reduce the laser power because the laser power is in order of what? If we illuminate that much of laser in a biological specimen, it would just fry out. So obviously the laser power need to tone down and that is achieved by the Pockel cell. From the Pockel cell, the laser moves through a mirror array and ultimately this mirror array guides the laser towards the microscope body. Behind the microscope, there would be a periscope that would allow the laser beam to, uh, to ascend up and ultimately through the periscope, it would enter the microscope body. And ultimately, there are other dichroic scope and filled in the filter cube, which diverts this light or li diverts this laser through the objective into the specimen. Now, the fluorescent specimen would emit fluorescence that is collected back through the objective and it actually hits the detector. And that is how an image is created. So now you can see the microscope is scanning and forming an image of some neurons in the screen. And that's how we can image it. Now let's talk about the applications of two-photon microscopy. Already you can appreciate that 
with using two photon microscopy we reduce the chances of photo bleaching now with a two photon microscopy it is possible to image behaving animals in real time scientists can really look at what's going on inside a brain of an animal while they are performing a task and that is why they need to design custom built microscope like this one shown here so they can literally dig a hole in the brain and they can inject some fluorescent dyes or genetically encode fluorescent uh, calcium sensor by which they can monitor the neuronal activity and another advantage is two photon microscope can literally image some neurons or layer of neurons which are at least 500 microns deep from the surface using a normal fluorescence microscope we would never achieve this depth everything would be blurry due to scattering but we talked about how scattering is taken care of in two photon microscopy right higher the wavelength lower the scattering that's why deep tissue imaging can be done using two photon microscopes that's the biggest advantage now let us understand how neuroscientists use this two photon microscope very frequently to monitor neuronal activity they use a genetically encoded calcium sensor which has a calmodulin moiety which can ultimately bind to the uh, bind to the calcium they have a fluorescence protein gfp and a m13 helix so when there is a calcium binding this particular assembly leads to fluorescence of gfp so fluorescence readout gives us a readout of calcium levels if the neuron is active more calcium and it would give rise to more fluorescence so monitoring fluorescence level over time would give us an idea about how neuronal activity is changing now there are certain calculations known as delta f by f where they calculate a fluorescence intensity at a given time point minus the initial fluorescence intensity and normalize it with initial fluorescence intensity this is a characteristic uh, way of analyzing the fluorescence change over time and you can do this for different different time frames and later on create a movie to understand how the neurons are firing over time what are their firing dynamics how the calcium dynamics is changing over time for example scientists would draw region of interest in these images and calculate over time that would give them traces like this you can understand how four different neurons are firing and how their firing is similar or different also scientists can do certain analysis from this kind of uh, data they can understand whether the network activity is synchronous versus asynchronous on the right hand side you can see the network activity is very synchronous that means they are all blinking and dimming together and that leads to these kind of traces shown below whereas in the left hand side you can see there is a asynchronous activity where the neurons are blinking and they are not synced in time all these things has different meaning in terms of how our brain works and that can be achieved by using a two photon microscope there are many other advantages of two photon microscope we didn't discuss all of that in this particular video but we only discussed this part anyway just to summarize we looked at the principle of two photon microscopy we looked at the components and the light path of two photon microscopy finally we talked about one usage of two photon microscopy in neuroscience i hope this was useful you can get further notes in my uh, facebook page but don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon you can also support my channel by clicking on the super thanks button you can contribute a little bit to my channel that would your supports means a lot for me anyway you can get notes and flashcards in my facebook channel these dynamic flashcards would really help you in your preparation the link for facebook channel is there in the description as usual like share and subscribe you can also 